G'day, I'm Spud Thomas and I'm a big believer in wiener education. Time spent on wiener education pays dividends for the life of the animal and for breeding females this can be up to eight or more years. In the following chapter we give you the principles behind the exercises that will get you started in your wiener education program. However, nothing can replace imagination and learning from experience. Weaning programs will vary from station to station. Factors such as environment, available infrastructure, staff resources and your breeding program will impact on how your weaner education program is implemented. You may receive weaners straight off their mums, or weaners who have been left in a holding yard for days prior to transport. Some weaner mobs will be quieter than others for these reasons. Either way, the principles of weaner education stay the same. You'll know when you've done your job because the cattle will show you. Cattle are quiet, calm and responsive. They're educated. Before weaning, animals have had little contact and handling with people, so it's up to us to apply our knowledge and stockmanship to give them a first-time positive experience. The benefits will flow through generations of your herd. You'll find it easier each year as the calves who come in on cows who have received a comprehensive education program themselves will have already learned from their mothers not to be stressed by handling. Have hay and clean water ready prior to the weaners being drafted off. Some people find it beneficial to give weaners a day in the yards to settle before commencing their education. When approaching weaners or going about your daily jobs in the yards, don't just walk straight at them or around them. Apply the principles of pressure and relief and straight lines and angles. Do this when you go to check their water, when you're feeding hay or if you're picking up string from around the yards. Apply enough gentle pressure to arouse the cattle and then back off when you get a response. This will give them relief and teaches the livestock from a young age to respond positively to light pressure. The bottom line with all of these exercises is getting the cattle to a stage where they are responsive, calm and cooperative. Stress off is the name we give to an exercise that has multiple desirable effects over a mob of livestock. It calms unsettled cattle and could put life into cattle that are numb to movement. The stress off exercise illustrates how knowing the right handling techniques can help you advance your stockmanship to a new level. For this exercise, select a yard that allows good movement for the number of cattle you have and is safe for the handler. Cattle will need to be taken in both a clockwise and an anti-clockwise direction. Before we explain how to do the stress off, let's watch it in fast motion, see if we can pick up some of the key handling techniques.
So to start with these wieners, you've really got to go in and gauge what they're like as to whether when they hear a little bit of noise they rush or whether they've gone half sleepy because they've been in the yard for a reasonable amount of time. So, um, and, and you would alter what you do. So if they're real fast running wieners, you'd spend more time trying to stay ahead of, and, and slow the movement down and, and steady the lead. But if they're a little bit uh, slow going, then you'd have to get a little bit moved by, by pushing a bit. So that's what we can do now, is go in and just get a gauge, a feel of where these are at. So we'll walk, walk in here, sort of looking to the left, looking to the right. We've got to get some sort of movement. You've got to get movement before you get direction. Uh, a lot of effort goes into trying to get wieners nice and slow right from the start, but as you can see, the, the, the left-hand side of the mob, we'll call that the lead, is moving. So put a bit of pressure on there because there's nothing worse than the tail end of cattle not wanting to keep up with the flow. So we can walk in there with squeezes them a bit, come along there on a parallel line, that sets some of them going. Walk in and put a bit more pressure on them. So we'll move like that, which sets them going. Trying to stay either parallel to the fence or on this occasion you're staying parallel to the diagonal of the mob. You need to either be parallel to a fence if there's not many in the yard or if you've got cattle that the number in the mob occupies more than a, a side of a fence then it's very important to stay parallel to the edge of the mob. So you can walk forward like that, you can apply pressure there, that'll squeeze them there and at this stage put a bit of pressure on them and set them free and try not to look at them too much but build corridors with your eyes. So what you're doing, you're setting some cattle going by squeezing them like that and you're coming forward which stops some, you're starting some up like that, you're coming forward which stops some, you're starting some up, you're coming forward which stops some. So what you're actually doing is for months and months the mother has all, the, the cow has always started the wiener up nearly always stop the wiener. So a lot of these wieners haven't learned to think for themselves. So if they don't know to start, they don't always go to feed water. And if they don't know to stop, they can wear themselves out. So this is like a surrogate movement, mother, where you're walking into the yard, creating some movement with pressure, and you're coming along your line, which stops some cattle, you go with that little black one there, you start them up, you come forward and stop them. So after a while, they start to realise that it's not always their mother that starts them up, and it's not always their mother that stops them, and as you fade out of the picture, then they start to tend to think for themselves. Once again, you come in and build corridors with your eyes that way, just by pressure to your cattle, so those that are hanging back, hanging back and going slow, build pressure. Notice we didn't stop them cold they actually slowed themselves to a stop. If you stop them too hard there, you can get cattle that don't move at all. But now we'll take them around in a clockwise direction. Once again, you can put pressure on the tail, but try not to go behind the tail. So I could go around and tuck those cattle in or just keep putting pressure on them. Keep putting pressure on them that way. Keep putting pressure on them that way. And when they turn and go the right way, freeze and step aside. So when the beast is not going, it's receiving pressure and when it goes, it gets relief. Now, in my mind, I split the mob into five. That's the front fifth, second fifth, third fifth, fourth fifth, and fifth fifth. A lot of people would see that as one mob of cattle, but I see it as five different spots. So to make these cattle work, walk, you've got to go up and influence the first or second fifth, reverse along your line, that makes the next, next fifth go you may have to step aside and then you walk in and put pressure on them, travel with them. You put pressure on them, travel with them for a bit because then you're controlling your lead and you're having your tail all stream past you. You walk in like that, you put pressure on them and you step forward and now we're on the diagonal of the mob where you can control the destination and the speed of the lead and you can have the tail volunteer to keep up. And, and try to be building with your eyes and your intent, a corridor for those cattle to walk within. Apply pressure there, and except for this green boat stuck behind the mud, we didn't have those cattle hanging back. Because normally by the time you go to get them, your lead does some corrupt thing like run around you or clear off. The cattle have it, they try to trick you. They try to trick you into going behind them so that they can come around you. 
Whereas if you can stay on the edge of the mob, you can virtually be in two spots at once. You can control the destination and the speed of the lead, and you can have the tail volunteer to keep up. And if the cattle aren't going fast enough, you go like that. And then you pass out. So that's probably been about three laps around that way. And now they're probably in a real good state of mind to take to a bigger yard. They're probably in a better state of mind to work with any other mode, whether it be horse, whether it be uh, dog, whatever the case may be. And the big thing to remember, it's actually put them in a frame of mind where now they'll eat and drink. Because before a beast eats, it has a considerable fire drill mob structure walk like that to feed, and then it eats. Before they drink, they come in as a herd like that, and then they drink. So I think it's, you're actually not getting full value for your f money that you spend on having good water in the yards and having good hay or pellets in the yards if you don't do to them the thing that stimulates them to eat and drink and that's an organised fire drill mob structure type walk. So what we're doing here is actually tripping their mechanism to make them want to eat and drink which is ever so important for weight gain or lack of weight loss uh, and good health in weaners. Corner settling exercise aims to have weaners settling in all corners of the yard and also to have good organised mob movement. You will move the mob from one corner to another corner until you have them walking calmly in an organised group and standing willingly in all corners. If you can get them settled in all corners, you are more likely to have success settling them into any area of a paddock or a yard. You need a yard with two or more corners. I like to use a square yard if available. The number of cattle you work at any time will depend on the size of the selected yard and your skill level. My preferred method of educating weaners is with working dogs. However, if you don't have educated working dogs, use your preferred method for handling cattle. If you work in a team of people, remember the V-points of the mob and apply your stock handling techniques. Work in parallel lines and angles to shift the cattle. Watch your focus. Looking directly at the cattle is counterproductive. If you want cattle to go through a gate, look at the gateway, not stare bare the cattle. And remember to keep in position by frequently looking forward and looking back. Cattle will always have a preferred corner and a least preferred corner of the yard. When you first start this exercise, you might find cattle gallop to their most preferred corner. If they run, let them. At first you want to avoid blocking forward movement, as at this stage any movement is good movement. Eventually you will have them walking calmly in a collected mob around the yard from one corner to the other. Our aim is to work weaners from corners A to B to C to D. I have let cattle out from corner A and have moved them towards corner B. As you can see, cattle are quite willing to travel to corner B, but they don't want to settle there. So I move on to the next corner, which is corner C. Here the cattle find less comfort and shoot back to their most preferred corner. When cattle break back to their most preferred corner, go with them, don't block their movement. At first, we want to work with their choice of direction Later we will ask for more. When cattle choose to settle in a corner, reward them by giving relief. You will still need to block escapees. However, generally, the mob will be starting to settle of their own accord. So far, it seems their least preferred corner is corner C. Make a note of this. When the mob is settling in this corner, we will know they are starting to get into a frame of mind where they are better able to think through the situations and respond calmly without resorting to fight or flight response. Now I am taking cattle to corner D. When moving cattle from corner to corner, focus on getting good mob movement. That is, getting cattle to flow in a collected and organised mob travelling at their natural walking pace. You will need to continually move along with the cattle this will enable you and the team to be in position to prevent spills or breakaways. Here, cattle are settling in corner D. Great. Give it a minute or two for the whole mob to settle. 
You want all cattle calm and cooperative and showing little resistance to being held in the corner. Now we will move on to their least preferred corner. By this stage the cattle should be gaining confidence to explore new areas. They should be learning to think through the situation rather than reacting to it. Also at this point you can start to be a little more persistent in making your idea become their idea. Be in position to catch any breakaway cattle. Here I have moved and a beast has broken out heading for corner A. So I send my dogs to bring it back to the mob. Your team's positioning will help the mob to find their own relief. In this case, relief for the cattle comes when they settle in corner C. Once they have found this, call time out. This allows cattle the time to recoup and process what they have just learned. It also gives your dogs, men or horses, a break and a chance to regroup. After you have travelled one way around the yard, you can head the other way. You might find their least preferred corner changes when you change direction. This shouldn't concern you. Apply the same principles until you have them settling in all corners. What you've seen here is five minutes of footage from an experienced handler, trained working dogs and a reasonably quiet mob. The corner settling exercise can take hours or even days. It all depends on your situation, your skill level and the response in your cattle. If you don't have access to a square yard, get creative and improvise. At some stage, your cattle need to be well enough educated for you to be able to move them without the aid of fences. By doing the fence off exercise, cattle and handler learn not to rely on fences for safety and comfort. Imagine a line running down the centre of the longest part of the yard. Your aim is to walk cattle down this line in a collected mob with no livestock sticking or escaping to fences. The same principles apply as with the corner settling exercise. Use a soft block on forward rushing movement, tuck in escapists and reward cattle using relief. You will need a yard large enough that allows cattle to travel with forward motion with clearance from yard fences. Initially start cattle off like you would in the corner settling exercise. But instead of resting them in a corner, continue working them around the perimeter of the fence until you get good collected mob movement. Then start to move cattle towards the centre of the yard. Use the concept of pressure and relief to move cattle off fences and keep cattle following your lead. Once cattle are moving freely and keeping clear of the yard fences, you are ready to move on to the next stage of training. The day paddock exercise is the first let out of cattle from the yards into a small paddock. By this stage, cattle should have learned how to start, stop, walk collectively in a mob and be ready to be handled in a larger area. This exercise prepares cattle for tailing out, which is another progression in their training to prepare them for the release into their home paddock. When letting cattle out into a larger paddock, position your team where they can hold and block cattle until the last beast walks through the gate. After shutting the gate, it is critical that cattle are turned back to face the shut gate and wait until you are ready to move on. This avoids cattle forming bad habits such as rushing through gateways or escaping ahead of the mob. Use the same concepts and patterns as applied in the corner settling and fence off exercises. Settle cattle in the corners to reinforce the teachings of the corner settling exercise and walk cattle in an organised mob. Eventually they will respond to your instructions to stop, start, collect up and settle in a mob without the assistance of fences. Once you have responsive and cooperative cattle, yard up. The bottom line as a stock handler is to have your cattle so they can be easily yarded drafted and processed. For cattle, this is a mentally challenging experience. The travelling through the yards exercise exposes cattle to narrow corridors and confined spaces. It also teaches them to deal with the pressure of being in close proximity to humans. This is not a free run for your cattle through the yards. In this exercise you are still using your stock handling skills to instil good habits in your livestock, some of which include walking calmly through gateways, not rushing through the race and learning to respond positively 
to pressure and relief. The way you approach this exercise will depend on your yard setup. You may like to start with moving cattle from yard to yard. When you do this, bring cattle to a closed gate and then fill the next pen. In a full but not overly tight pen, cattle learn to deal with the pressure of confined spaces without panicking. Travel cattle through the race and crush, managing their movement so they flow calmly and steadily. If cattle can learn to be calm when faced with obstacles and confined spaces, they are then better prepared for their next interaction with humans, whether it be drafting, processing or trucking. You may be being paid on the result of how well they cope with their next yarding, especially in the case of sale cattle. The final stage in wiener education is tailing out. This should be done over the course of days or weeks. Over this time, you will need to continually assess if they are showing the desired behaviour and adjust your program accordingly. You will need to assess where your wieners are at and what extra guidance they may need to prepare them. Tailing out involves walking cattle in open paddocks, guiding them to grazing and watering as a collective mob, then re-yarding them. After a few days, cattle should walk out of the yards calmly, settle easily on water and put their heads down to graze without being concerned about people, horses, dogs or motorbikes. They can then be settled in their paddock under supervision, then progress to being left unsupervised in a holding paddock where they learn to live without their mothers. Don't be afraid to introduce variety into your tailing program. Expose weaners to other forms of handling than what you have used to date, be it horses, bikes or other vehicles. Tail out in different paddocks let out and yard up using a variety of gateways. The more variety and new experiences you can expose them to and out of the yards, the better. Once you are happy with the standard of education of the wieners and they are settled in their home paddock, continue to monitor them. Look to make sure they are coming into water and supplements and that none have escaped or fallen ill. There are some golden rules that I've found useful from years of educating wieners. Cattle consider being drafted and processed as a frightening experience. Be thoughtful in your approach. I always look at the situation from the animal's point of view. How can I make it a positive experience for them? Always bring cattle to a shut gate. This is especially important for yarding up. When letting cattle out of the yard, block and hold the cattle until the last beast is through the gate and then turn the cattle back onto the shut gate until you are ready to move on. All the exercises we have done prelude to cattle not rushing through the gates, but flowing calmly with controlled movement in, out and through the yards. If you find something is not working, look back at your groundwork.